Hey everyone, Ari Mapur here, and today we're going to show you how to get started with Altium scripting by using ChatGPT or Generative AI. ChatGPT gives you the ability to write your Delphi script for you for Altium scripting, especially if you're not super comfortable with it or you're just trying to get started. So by request, we're going to go through the whole process of generating it from scratch and modifying existing scripts. So come join me and let's get started. So before we get started, I want to walk through the process of setting up a project, an Altium scripting project. And one of the most important things is that if you're not familiar with Altium scripting at all, it's really, really important to use the resources from Altium themselves. If you just do a quick search on Google, Altium scripting, the first hit, it'll show you how to write scripts, how to set up your environment. There's a lot of documentation that talk about this whole process here. Um, what is it, what you're doing, um, and even you can go up to uh, a level higher and it'll give you a lot of background information about how this whole process works. Again, the purpose of Altium scripting is to automate some of the more kind of trivial menial tasks uh, within Altium. You'll see it with some of the library importers. If you've seen my uh, video on all the external library importers, there are third party companies that use Altium scripting in order to import through their CAD model generation libraries. They take those outputs and then input that into Altium natively using scripting. Um, there are plenty of other things that you can extract data from your PCB project, um, both on the PCB side, the schematic side, projects in general, metadata that you can then feed into other programs or other software. So a lot of really cool capabilities. Um, there's also an example, we're gonna go through the examples later. Um, I'm going to reference those examples. Those examples that came from Altium, they have, uh, they have all of that listed here. There's also an article for those who are not um, interested in, in maybe looking at the video aspect of things or following here online. All of this is written down in the article that will be posted in the description of this video. So refer to that article as well for links. Um, for other resources or just for a written version of this video. Now, again, before we dive into the actual scripting, I want to talk about uh, the project itself. Debugging, running, iterating through your design, that's kind of out of the scope of this video, but uh, talking about how to get the project up and running and then bringing stuff in from ChatGPT, we're gonna cover that just a little bit. So first of all, to start a script project or to run a script or create a script, you really need to start a script. You need to create a script project. So if I go to file new script, script project, okay? And I'm in Altium Designer. Again, all of this is also written in the article if you wanna follow along through text. Um, so now I have my script project. I can say add new to project script unit. And now um, I have this, I wanna save it, control S and I'll say, um, first, let's save the project itself. So let's say save. And I will say, uh, let's call it uh, example project YouTube. Okay. And it's going to say my project. Project YouTube. Okay. So I have that all saved. Now, over here, you see there's nothing to run. Uh, we can go back to an example. And let's just pull out like a hello world. This is basically just showing a message. We can copy this code. Control A, Control C. I'm gonna put it in here. Save it. Then I'm gonna to go to file, run script. It's going to want to reference my script project. So over here, this is the example project show a message. There you go. Hello world. So now I've written my script. I've really sweated and toiled to, to make it all working. So I want to save that and I want to put it under version control. Super important. You don't want to lose all of that. So I'm going to go to history and version control, add to project, add project to version control. 
this is saving this in my Altium 365 workspace. I'm already logged in to Altium 365. You could save this in um, another type of version control if you want, like if you're using a GitHub or whatever it is, you can set that up. But this kind of works right out of the box. I'm already logged in to Altium 365, works for me. So I go over here, projects. If I hit OK, it'll save it, it'll store it, and you'll be able to view it on Altium 365 server. Um, you obviously won't be able to look at it natively like you do schematics in Altium 365, at least at this point of the time of writing the article and doing this video. Um, but at least it'll be under version control. So now that we have all of that set up, we are now ready to dive into ChatGPT and the examples. So now we're ready to dive into ChatGPT and generating an Altium script, Delphi script language specifically to automate some of the different activities in Altium Designer. Um, if you're not familiar with ChatGPT, I mean, it's pretty much everywhere. Generative AI in general, um, not just ChatGPT. There are plenty other systems like Google Bard um, and other generative AI systems. Uh, I'm just singling out ChatGPT because this is what works for me. But again, you could use any other type of system. Um, they're not exclusive one or the other. Uh, I also have, just as a disclaimer, I have ChatGPT Plus, um, so I get to use GPT-4. Uh, I find that that gets me a little bit better results than GPT-3.5. Something to think about, again, 100% not required. It's still free for 3.5. You could probably still get away with, with that as well. Um, one more point is that I do have a uh, video and uh, article prior to this one that talks about using ChatGPT for automated testing. Uh, if you want to take a look at that video as well, or that article to uh, get familiar a little bit, we give a little introduction to ChatGPT there as well. Okay, so I'm here, uh, chat.openai.com. I've got my ChatGPT account. Uh, I'm logged in, I'm ready to go. And the first thing I wanted to do when I started this whole project was obviously ask the question, are you familiar with writing Delphi script for Altium Designer? And of course it said yes. Um, and it gave me an example of that. And okay, so I wanted to like play around a little bit more and said, are you capable of writing out job files? Well, no, not, not quite. Okay, so I said, all right, fine. I'm not gonna push, push the boundaries a little too much. Just write me a Delphi script that lists all nets in my project. And so if you see over here, what it did is it wrote me all of this. And then I realized, oh, PCB server, it's actually, going to my PCB doc and trying to list all the nets. And I said, you know what? I, I want a message box with those results. And then I realized afterwards, I'm not actually looking for the PCB uh, doc. I want to iterate through the schematics. Okay. So now again, there's back, there's always going to be back and forth um, unless you have like a narrowed in template that you give to chat GPT. I'm still experimenting with it. And so I do a lot of back and forth with ChatGPT, and that's totally okay. Everybody should feel comfortable just doing this kind of dance back and forth with generative AI until we all get used to it and figure it out. Um, it's still super new, um, and that's, that's just how it's gonna be for a while. So I say, okay, you know, do that, iterate through the schematics, it gives me the code, and I am like, whoa, this is awesome. All right, so I go here, I copy my code, Let's go back to the example project that we wrote here. I'm going to, so again, if I want to run this script, I go to file, run script, I go to my project, show a message, hello world. Okay, great. Now I'm going to put that here. Okay, I'm going to put that code that it generated for me. And I'm going to go to a schematic, and now with this schematic focused on, so if you see how this is highlighted, I'm focusing on this schematic. I'm basically telling Altium Designer, I want to now go run a script against this specific schematic. Okay, so I go list nets, and here we go, undeclared identifier enet. Um, so now when that fails and you see this red thing, this means it's in debugging mode. So you need to actually go to run, stop, or control F3 and then it stops the script. Otherwise, you won't be able to run the script again until you've stopped it. So I tell it exactly that, undeclared identifier, enet. It says, apologize for the confusion. And if you're familiar again with writing code using uh, pairing, code pairing with ChatGPT, 
you know, it'll do this. It says, I apologize. I forgot about this or I messed a, made a mistake here. Um, so it gives me that. And again, I get another error. I give it back again. It rewrites. I get another error again, rewrites another error by the fifth time. And if you see here, by the fifth time, my conversation ends, which means I got it working now. Also, another thing you're going to see probably a lot of tutorials online, people go through already generated ChatGPT because ChatGPT is non-deterministic. It's not always going to give you the same exact answer you got previously. So if I did this all in real time, I may not get the same results and it could either error out once or it could error out, error out 10, 20 times before I get the right thing. So just to save time, make it a little bit easier, I'm, uh, I'm just reviewing what I've already done. So now I go back to my schematic. I go run script, list all nets, and there we go. Message box listing all the nets over here on the schematic page. Um, I did say before within the project, um, I don't believe it actually was able to run through the whole project. It might have just been it might have just been the oh, actually it might have been done the whole thing. Uh, now that I look at it, it did. It did nest through the project, um, but I didn't obviously have um, I didn't obviously have all of the uh, board annotations and everything like that in there. So this is just like a basic iterate through all the schematics and grab the nets through there. Um, and to me, this demonstrated what I needed to do, and I was happy with that. So. That's how we generate a script from scratch. Again, prone to errors, but that's okay. So in the next example, we're going to actually take an existing script and see if ChatGPT can iterate on that for us. All right, so here's the final piece of the tutorial today. And this is where we're going to take an existing script, um, maybe something that we found online, maybe something we've even written ourselves, uh, maybe something we need help with, and we want to pair program with uh, ChatGPT. So in this case, again, unlike the previous example, uh, we give ChatGPT a prompt and then get it expected to generate the whole script. Uh, we are just asking it to tweak certain things. All right. So first of all, um, one of the things that uh, I want to mention, and I mentioned this in the article too, is that Altium, part of that initial page that I showed you, the Altium designer, scripting reference examples, there's a, a scripting example page where you can download a zip file of scripts that were written a long time ago. Some of them are still not compatible. You can see this kind of warning sign. Some of them are not compatible with the newer versions of Altium, but it does give you like a good reference. And again, there are there is a community um, both on the Altium forums. There's a Git, there are GitHub repositories where people have created large collections of Altium scripts. Um, it's really great. Um, there's a there's a like a core group of developers in the Altium forums that uh, <clears throat> that are really active and and are really good at scripting and really helpful. Actually, <clears throat> if you have questions, I've participated on the forums, too, and, and it's been it's been really, really helpful for me. So uh, we're going to go here, download these examples. Once you download it and unzip it, uh, there will be a project in there. Uh, called SCH scripts under the Delphi scripts. And we're going to open all of that. So let's just, uh, let's explore there. So the folder is called uh, scripts. And then there's Delphi scripts. Then there's SCH. And then I opened up the project in this location. So in this location, there is a PRJ SCR uh, called SCH underscore scripts. .prj -scr. So you just go file, open project. Um, open, and then you want to uh, open a project, open project, and then you'll navigate to that location. Okay, so um, let's go back to ChatGPT. And if you see here, um, I've got an example. It's called placing a new port object. So let's go back here. And there's place a port. Now, this is very trivial, very simple. It just creates a port object and places it somewhere on the schematic. And so I say, update this script, and I put um, these three um, ticks 
in order to designate that it's code. You don't have to do that, but it, any extra kind of push you can give to ChatGPT, remember it's still a robot, is helpful. So when I put these three ticks, I encapsulate them in three ticks. That's like the nomenclature that we use in software to indicate that it's uh, it's code. Um, and so I wrap it in there and I literally just copied and pasted this, said update this script next with the following. Change the port name to new port, place it at 5,000, 5,000 XY coordinate, and then change the width to 500. Um, so it does that and it generates it. And again, that's like super duper trivial. I understand um, we're just trying to demonstrate uh, its capability right now and kind of do baby steps. And again, as we're as in general and testing, like we're not going to even if it's like a brand new board, a brand new power supply, whatever we're designing, we're not gonna slam it with the hardest requirement possible. You're gonna first kind of bring it up and tune it and play around with it. This is the same thing. We're just slowly experimenting and then we're gonna really slam it. Okay, so um, I'm going to create a new schematic file. Okay, and then I'm going to run that script. So let's actually, let's go back to the original. So the original here is, place a port. I'm going to run the script and under here, place a port. Okay. A new port with no net. If you see right here. Okay. New port with no net. Great. That's the original. That's the example. They give that to us already. All right. Now let's go here. Let's copy and paste that. Copy code. Swap back, save it. And now let's rerun that script. Save port. And there you go. You see it's changed its name, it's changed its location, and it's changed the width. Beautiful. So we now have proven that it can do very mundane tasks that you probably could have done yourself just by editing some of the values here. Whatever. That's okay. Fine. Again, we're just trying to test it out. Let's get a little bit more complicated. Now, update that script to place a net label instead of a port. The location is now 3,000, 5,000 XY coordinate and the name is untitled.net. Okay, here's your updated script. Fantastic. Let's go run it. Okay, let's go to all team designer, play support. Okay, and we're gonna run it. Great, we are looking forward to this. This is going to be great. Here we go, oh, and of course, undeclared identifier. And so we saw this with the uh, generation of the script from scratch. Um, undeclared identifier text color. And so again, all we do, I don't need to even say like, oh, it errored out or this or that. I literally just give it the error. Undeclared identifier text color. It says, oh yeah, whoops, I made a mistake. Uh, ISH net label doesn't have a text color property. Whether that's true or not, I haven't validated that, but maybe it's a different name or whatever it is. And then I ran that, it gave me an updated, and I think it just even just deleted it. And then Again, next error is undeclared identifier name. And so it says, you're right, there's no such thing as a name. So let's go here, we're gonna stop. Okay, control uh, F3. I'm gonna go update this. So that was two tries. Let's see if it passes. And run script. And notice how it actually even changed the name of the script, it's clever enough to uh, it's a summary placing a new net label. And then they call the procedure place a net label because I told it net label, which is nice. I mean, that's, uh, that's nice of them to do that. So let's, I need to run it again in focus. So I made that mistake. I didn't run it in focus of the schematic sheet. And there we go, untitled net, right at the location that we're looking for, 3,000, 5,000 XY coordinate. You see in the bottom left corner here, 3,000, 5,000. Uh, XY coordinate with the untitled net. Um, would have been nice if I if it could have figured out the, the color of the net label, but that's that's okay. Again, this has demonstrated that it's capable of modifying the script itself. And that concludes the basic implementation of getting Altium scripting generated from scratch and tweaked and modified using chat GPT. So today we looked at Altium scripting using generative AI, ChatGPT specifically. We first started with navigating the scripting project, uploading that or getting it into revision control using Altium 365, and then diving into examples, generating Altium scripts 
completely from scratch using ChatGPT, and then also taking examples that we found online and tweaking those to our needs, to tailor our needs. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of them, please hit the like button, add some comments, and definitely subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.